it, it covers from on the social landscape, but also touches on economics, politics, on a lot of social movements that have come about. So a huge trend that has taken the world by storm, especially now that the middle class has really risen up, um, has been status. And this is about people keeping up with each other. Um, and within many markets, it has come up as a form of a, a blatant materialism. In South Africa, about a year ago, there was a huge trend um, in townships, especially poor townships at that, where you'd have cliques that come out and they all dress the same way in expensive clothes. And it was a competition with another clique based on who's wearing what and how expensive it is. It involved burning of clothes and wasting of money and pouring alcohol all over each other called Izikotane. And that's status, but taken on, on a much more blatant and much more ad adulterated level. Um, but also on, on other scales, we've had tribe leaders who also push materialism, like Kanyimbao, who's been around and a claim to fame is gold digging. You had the likes of Uyanda Mbuli, who works for the Gauteng government, and at one point had a, a fashion line, which unfortunately tanked when Gerd Johan Katsia started his own. And she was slammed for wearing fake Christian Louboutins, which are very expensive shoes, but she took drum into her house and showed them an entire collection of more than 100 pairs of the same brand. So there are, there's a huge movement towards materialism and there are certain tribe leaders that have mushroomed across the country. So that's one of the trends that, that uh, has brought up uh, a new movement of tribes across the country. And this is not just in South Africa. I mean, there's an MTV program called My Super Suite 16, which is also around lavish parties thrown for 16-year-olds when they come of age. And it's been going on for years. And now it has mushroomed a lot because the middle class is economically active and have a lot of spending money, and they're not afraid to spend it. Two in particular stand out for me as uniquely South African. Uh, one is the blurring of lines. So years ago, probably about two decades ago, when Johnny Clegg came into the picture, people thought he was crazy. Who's this white man singing in Zulu? 20 years later, if not more, we've had a lot of other young budding musicians that have contributed towards blurring the lines. So, for example, a new leading band, well, fairly new, uh, called Mikasa has come into the scene and it's led by a, a white Portuguese male who sings in Zulu. They shoot their videos in, in, in the township. They, they mingle in parties where they're predominantly black people and they sing house music, Afropop music that is predominantly appreciated by black people. You have about four or five years ago, you had a gentleman called Francois Henning who used to sing Guaito music. In fact, his claim to fame song was one called Vasetzana, um, and he was called Likhoa, which means white man. Uh, and this is going to continue because we realize that we're human beings at the end of the day, and all that brings us together is just the fact that we're human and nothing else. Twitter is one fragmented space in South Africa. And there's uh, black Twitter, there's white Twitter, there's feminist Twitter. And each faction or each fragment has its own leaders. So for example, you have black Twitter led by the likes of Simpiwe Dana and Pumla Dinoa Gola, who are very vocal about black consciousness and are bringing it into a modern space. You have the likes of uh, Nomboniso Gasa, who are pushing feminism on a much higher scale than before. Uh, you have the likes of Kaya Langa and the likes of Mzansi Girl, who are opinionistas all in their own right. So they push certain, certain opinions, they push certain topics, and these people lead a whole crowd, hundreds of thousands if not more, of Twitter followers. So this fragmentation that's there within social media trickles back into, in, into offline communities and people rally around around these movements, around black consciousness, around around rhinos, for example, um, around feminism, and it, it will continue to fragment both on the online and on the offline space. So a lot of trends will continue to define tribes and communities uh, within the social landscape. And for me, what, what, what that means is that brands need to take that into account. LSMs are not the currency that works anymore. We need to start putting together a new currency that takes into account consumer behavior, not just based on economics, but also based on 
psychosocial dispositions. Humans have evolved and so should the currencies that we use to define them.